we kick things off right out of the gate. We welcome in the head coach of the Loyola Greyhounds. It is great to see him here. He is Coach Tavares Hardy, and he's first on the hot seat. Coach, thank you so much for stopping by to see us. You are probably the tallest coach that will be joining us in studio, so we're going to have to adjust the camera a couple times a day. But it's great to see you, sir. Thank you for coming in. Great to see you all as well. I thought Coach Scary had me by a couple <laughs> inches. Yeah, you know what? Now that I think about it, no. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you beat me to the joke. Yeah, I was, yeah. I, I, the, the wheels yeah. were turning there. No, so. not quite. Not yeah. <laughs> quite. It's great to see you. You know what? I, I feel like I, I want to do this right out of the shoot. We, yeah, I caught up with one of your former players recently. And, you know, I've gotten to know you a good bit over the years, done some of your games, and you've been in here every year with Patrick and I. And I just wondered if there was maybe something that we didn't know about you, that, you know, how you tick and, and why it is that you've been able to be successful at this. And so I was asking, again, a former player of yours, is there something that we should know about Coach Hardy that might help explain him? And this is – I just wanted you to hear this. This is what I got back. You know, I've heard he's, he's not a great golfer. So, you know, you, you, you got you, you to gotta let him know. You know, I've heard he, he can't break 100. Wow. Wow. That is, uh, boy, boy, it, that's really. It's close. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've gotten better. I, you know, I had a, a, a nice run where I was in the 90s. And when I'm in the 90s, I am happy. So, so he's actually right. That's, if that's not great, that's me. So you just picked up golf in the last couple of years? Yeah, you know, it was strictly because of COVID. There was, they wouldn't let us do much. I love my family. I had a great time being home with the four kids and my wife all the time. But you just need something. Um, we needed something at that moment. And for me, it was golf. I didn't own clubs. Um, so bought them, never took any lessons, just got out there and started playing. And it's been fun. I've got a chance to travel to some cool places and play some great courses and really meet some some awesome people uh, in the Baltimore community and beyond. So that, of course, was the voice of Santi Aldama. Have you played with Santi specifically? No, he just he just picked it up as well. You know. Okay, but, so he's talking yeah. smack when really he's probably right. not any better. He's not any better. But, <laughs> you know, draft, uh, the day before the draft, we were out in Spain in Gran Canaria, and uh, he actually hosted us for a lunch on a golf course. And uh, I-, I wanted to play it so bad. I didn't have my clubs, <laughs> but uh, – the addiction was real at the time, but he, he's picking it up as well. I got to get him out there uh, in the offseason. That's cool. That's very cool. He is uh, Tavares Hardy. He's with us here in studio. Coach, um, I, I promise we will talk basketball. I just I wanted to bring up because Santi is joining us on the show tomorrow. Seeing him move into the starting lineup this yeah. year, what that means for you, for the sign- – obviously, the first-round pick, that's a really big deal. Yeah. But now, like, getting in there and getting the minutes that he's getting, what has that meant to you? No, it's fantastic. I mean, we all know draft night, there were a lot of people surprised um, hearing his name called. Um, but we weren't, and the, the Grizzlies weren't. Uh, obviously, they, they to take him in the first round, it meant they really believed in him. And uh, he's proven them right. And it's with his work ethic. Um, and he just has tremendous upside. His talent, he's seven feet. He can dribble, pass, and shoot. From our perspective, we allowed him to do that here. We helped him develop with that, and um, that was one of the promises we made to him and his, his people uh, as, as we were recruiting him. And so, yeah, it's, it's awesome to be able to see that uh, everything that we told him could happen from our perspective is coming to fruition. As you head into this season, obviously, you're, you're replacing another pretty notable name on the roster, Cam Spencer. Uh, but but overall, you know, there's a fair bit of continuity there too. Like, how do you feel overall about what you have coming back? Considering obviously, there's a, a guy that averaged almost 19 a game that's not, but there's just about everything else is. No, I mean it would be really cool if uh, our two senior or senior classes included Santi Aldama and Cam Spencer, uh, two guys that we recruited and, and would be seniors. Uh, but at the same time, if it wasn't for COVID, Jalen Andrews wouldn't be back. Kenny Jones wouldn't be back. And so to have those two veterans who are extremely experienced uh, back on our roster this year, uh, I, I tell those guys we're really thankful for them because um, they could have transferred, you know, in today's culture. Um, you know, Jalen averaged 13, 14 points per game. Uh, power conference schools would have taken him, um, and, and he chose to come back to Loyola. So I appreciate him for that, and uh, we're going to really need those guys to lead our young guys because after that, uh, because we did lose that those two in the senior class, uh, we get we get really young. We got Golden DK, but um, then we have uh, ten freshmen and sophomores uh, that we expect to play, uh, and so that's a young group that's going to have to grow and develop. But uh, they're talented, and, and I think they'll get there. 
you know, it, it, Tavares Hardy, the head coach of Loyola, is in studio with us. You mentioned those sophomores, and I've I've seen a good bit of the Illiches, and in moments you're like, man, these dudes, they've they've got everything, right? Like the the skill set is entirely there. Um, and maybe I'll throw Golden in there as well, who like again in moments you see just sort of brilliance from it for this team to take that step back forward and compete again for the Patriot League title. Those guys in the front court, how important is it to see that consistent kind of next step from that group for you guys to make that jump and be right back into Patriot League con- contention? Yeah, it's it, it's critical. Um, we need, and I tell Golden all the time, we need you to be that dominant force that you, you we recruited. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and he wants to be. Uh, so let's go out there and be that. Uh, because between Golden, Alonzo, Fowray, yep. um, and, and as you mentioned, Milos and Velko, uh, that's a pretty pretty big front line. Um, and, and so we got to be able to use that, take advantage of it, um, and let those guys kind of become that dominant force collectively. And uh, if they can do that, then, yeah, the sky's the limit for this team. You mentioned Alonzo, and that was one of the guys I wanted to ask about with some of the reserves from last year that I'm guessing you're looking for a little bit more out mm-hmm. of, whether that's a, a Nick Marshall, uh, somebody of that ilk. How are some of those younger guys kind of emerging, and do you see a guy in particular you think can take a pretty big leap here year over year? Yeah, that group's been a little banged up, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest with you all. Uh, this summer and fall um, hasn't been easy for that group. Um, I think Chris Kazimka is going to be able to give us some really solid minutes. Um, he, he's he's developing in, in the – sort of a, a backup combo guard spot. Um, so I'm looking forward to him. David Brown has really stepped up. Um, you know, uh, he, he's going to compete for a starting spot. Um, you know, he's, he's improved his, his overall game. His shooting's been better. Uh, he just plays so hard. He's such a good kid. Uh, so those two, I would say, out of that class have, have, have shown the most recently. Some of the other guys have been a little more banged up. But uh, really looking forward to, uh, to getting those guys back healthy because there is some talent in there with 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 Milos and Velko and, and Nick Marshall. Is there a freshman that you're already seeing that you're saying like, look, I th- this guy, it's very clear, is going to be immediately in the mix minutes wise. Absolutely, uh, Dion Perry, um, you know, the point guard from Baltimore. Baltimore, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's he's going to start for us um, at point guard. He's going to allow us to move Kenny Jones over, wow. um, which should you know help take away some of the loss of Cam um, having Kenny at the mm-hmm. two. Um, you know, obviously he's. It, he didn't average 19 a game, but Kenny was able to make some some good shots for us, and uh, that that'll help us. I think Isaiah um, Alexander is growing in his role. Um, I think you're gonna watch that kid get better and better now. As all freshmen, he's gonna have some ups and downs, as, as well as Dion. But um, I think Isaiah, by the time we get in a Patriot League play, is, is gonna really be ready to go for us. Yeah. Um, and the last one's Tyson Commander, uh, who who came on late. Um, he he missed the summer, but uh, when you talk about explosive athlete, um, you know he's just getting his feet wet. Uh, look for him to grow throughout the year as well. And another local kid, another uh, local John Carroll, right? Carroll, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Are you nervous when you hand over a point guard job to a <laughs> freshman? Like I, I, I feel like that. I don't know. Is there trepidation at all? Uh, you know, having Kenny on the floor with him um, really helps. You know, there's a, a moment. There's moments in practice where I have Kenny and Chris and uh, Dion all together. And um, at the end of the day, you know, I tell Dion what our offense. Once we get in the half court, everybody can make plays, and so he can come off the ball when he wants um, and, and, and lighten the load a little bit. But it is hard for for for, for a freshman. But you know, I, he was the best point guard in the city um, last year, and uh, maybe the best player in the city last year. And uh, you know, I, I told him, Let, let's let's be that now, be that in the Patriot League. When you when you have enough of a group coming back like you do, obviously it's not the entire group, but you, you had a season where I'm sure once you got into late January, you were feeling pretty good, and things just kind of unraveled from there. How did you kind of evaluate that, and how did those guys evaluate that as they move forward in their careers into this season? Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where you got to trust the work you're putting in, um, really believe in your yourself. And believe in your teammates, believe in the system. Um, so we really dug back into our culture, uh, the the values that that, that we stress, um, and, and try to use that to catapult, um, you know, just everything that we do from a off season standpoint. Um, and, and so we really dug back into style of play. We dug back into five guys working together to help each other score. Um, felt like last year there was a lot of a lot of times we tried to take it upon ourselves to 
you know, will us to victory and, you know, we got to use each other. Um, that's that's the whole basis of how we play offensively and defensively. And uh, we really tried to emphasize that and train that more this summer and, and uh, fall and even spring. Talk about some of the players you lost. Coach Tavares Hardy from Loyola first up with us in this year's college basketball preview. I know another big change uh, is on the coaching staff as uh, Evo got a great opportunity to go out to UCLA. And mm -hmm. I imagine that's got to be pretty bittersweet for you because, you know, yeah. it's a great opportunity. But, like, you know, no. yeah. He had done a lot of good things here, clearly. Yeah, no, absolutely. But it, it's all sweet in terms of, you know, it's natural progression for him. Yep. Um, and he's earned it. You don't see that stuff. Uh, that's that's one of the things I am proud of with this group since I've been here. Uh, you don't see too many first-round draft picks. You don't see too many assistant coaches leaving to go to UCLA. That's yeah. a top-five program. Uh, you know, they'll be, they'll be in contention for the Final Four this year. And he's already hit the ground running, recruiting well. <clears throat> so – no, really happy for him. Um, you know, I tell him as we win uh, and the, the fully plan to win this year, uh, as we win, he'll look at it and feel just as much a part of it as we do, even though he's not here. Uh, he left his mark, and that's what you want to do. You know, every job I left as an assistant coach, um, I always want to look back and feel like I left my mark. Um, and, and, you know, he, he certainly has uh, for Loyola, and we're, we're eternally grateful for him. You mentioned Jalen Andrews really right for the jump on this, but uh, just a little bit more on him just because he is as experienced as he is for you. He has spent as much time in your system as he has. How valuable is he going to be for, for this particular team? And is the fact that he already is a guy that you've counted on a lot mm -hmm. make it a little bit easier to kind of say – this is a guy we can we can build around for this year mm -hmm. and can handle a good chunk of the load, and you know it already. No, for sure. I mean, Jalen was the first recruit um, that I saw, evaluated, liked, and signed when I got the job. And the fact that I still have him going into year five mm -hmm. is awesome. Um, you know, the main thing for Jalen, uh, what I tell him all the time is impacting winning is what you need to be thinking about. It's not about how many points you score. It's not about – who gives you the accolades, like how do you impact winning um, on a day-to-day -day basis? And, and I want him to just, you know, live that <laughs> um, and, because it's so much more he can do for us, um, you know, whether it is putting the ball in a hole or making sure our young guys are feeling confident and comfortable or getting us an extra possession or locking down another team's best defender. Like whatever it takes to win, that's what I want him to be locked in on. And um, he'll have a more – that it'll make his – fifth year experience uh extremely worth it and he'll think about it the rest of his life as how how he won um his last time out at Loyola uh, I'll give this generically to every coach that comes in here today coach blank is the difference if Loyola is going to be able to compete to win the Patriot League shooting okay um I, I really believe we have the best uh potential shooting team we've had since I've been here um but guys got to—they're young, and so they got to learn where their shots are coming from, uh, and then they got to step up and just bang them. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't sub on mistakes, I don't sub on missed shots, I don't even talk about it really. So they got the green light, every one of them, um, step up, shoot with confidence, and because uh, they're capable. Do you think there's going to be an alpha that steps? You know, obviously we talk about losing Cam, yeah. like he was the guy, right? In right. those moments, do you feel like there is a player? that is going to step in to be that guy or it's more of a committee situation. You know, as I think about, you know, again, try not to daydream too much, but it's human nature. And you start to think about what it would take to be successful to win a championship, cut down the nets. That happens as coaches. Any of us that says it doesn't, it's a lie. Um, we do want to focus on the process so we can't get carried away with it. But when I think about this group and what, would, what it would take to cut down the nets, it really is a collective effort. We, we we don't have that alpha. Um, I think some guys may want to be that, and that's not really what this group is about. I, and I think once we figure that out uh, and put that together on the court, Kenny Jones is, has been playing at a, a higher level than he has been playing, but I don't think he needs to lead us in scoring for us to be successful. I think we need to be one of those 14, 13, 12, 11 uh, type, you know, across the board teams. And um, we can be really successful that way. That way, if one person isn't going, uh, somebody else can step up and take the load that night. And um, I, I think I really believe that's how this group is going to be. Is there any benefit to knowing like I, I'm, and I'm not sure if you even felt this way, but I think sometimes people say 
Well, you get into games and maybe everybody's just looking around and waiting for Cam to, to go be Superman, right? Yeah. Like, is there any benefit to knowing, hey, you, you can't wait around for that this year. That's not coming. Yeah, it's going to have to be learned. Um, but but I, I, do think, I do think there is an advantage to that. Yeah. Um, you know, our system is we've had the Patriot League leading scorers a leading score all four years that I've sure. been here. Andrew Costeca two years, Santi and then Cam. I don't we don't need that to be successful, mm -hmm. right? I think a collective effort, a balance, that's what our offense is really designed for. There's no difference in opportunities that the forward on the left side, which was Andrew Costeca, and the forward on the, the right side, like there's no difference in opportunities. Andrew is just capable of doing more. Right. And so I want a collective group of guys that are capable of doing everything. Then you make the right reads, you make the right decisions, you care about your teammates, you care about winning, and then it'll all balance itself out. I, I, I want to hang on a second. I just found out somebody's listening this morning. You, you guys are playing next Monday out at DePaul. Mm -hmm. All right. Bino. I, I need you to whoop Bino's ass. For yeah, me, Bino's right? in the I need building. You to, <laughs> Bino checked in this well. You know, that's my guy. I love yeah. Bino, of course. But you're going to have to go out there and whoop some DePaul ass. So, yeah, yeah. Hey. No, I, uh, I, Bino's I, great. I actually was going to bring up the idea. I know you went out to Chicago State a couple years ago. Yeah. But to be able to start a season out there, you probably uh, got to feel pretty good that, that opportunity to head back home. So. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Um, it, I had such a, a fun time coaching that game at Chicago State. Um you know, uh, I can't remember the exact number, but tons of family and friends that came. We had a, a very nice cheering section. We'll have the same uh, at DePaul. But obviously this is a, a tougher game. No offense to Chicago <laughs> State, but, um, you know, DePaul and, and, and what they're building, um, you know, those guys are doing a great job, not just Bino, Paris, Parham. They're recruiting um, at, at, a, at a really high level. Um, and, and so we're going to have to deal with their length, their athleticism. Um, it's year two. Um, if we were fully healthy and had everything going, um, yeah, I think we, 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 we put up a show this year. I told our guys, I said, we're not going in there with any, uh, with any false sense of hope. We're going to, we're going to battle. We're going to compete. Um, but if they play well, it's going to be long. It's going to be hard for us. So, we're, we're, you know, if, if we play great and they don't play as well, then, then maybe we can give it a shot. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things where night in and night out, our guys want to compete. They want to develop, they want to get better. Um, and, and so, you know, I'm excited for this opportunity. We got a lot of great people coming out to the game. Uh, some business leaders in Chicago that I had previous relationships with. Um, the the president of DePaul actually has a child that goes to Loyola. Oh wow! Uh, which oh was, wow! Which is an awesome deal. So um, we might have some access to some things that we might not have normally <laughs> had access to. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice little trip that you make. They're like, wow, you guys, you guys put you up in the nice hotel. Yeah, on yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice <laughs> trip. Look at how that worked out. Uh, Coach, obviously, so uh, we mentioned it starts for real next Monday night, but you guys are hosting a cool exhibition uh, tomorrow night mm -hmm. uh, for people in this area. You're going to bring uh, Stevenson in to yeah. play a game. I, I know a lot of teams are kind of getting away from exhibitions at this point, like trying to go more of the – I know you played one of the, um, the scrimmages yep. against Morgan State this weekend, but why still do the exhibition? What's the value of this for you guys? No, it's uh, really twofold. Um, number one, like you said, for the fans – um, you know, to be able to play a local team. We played Hopkins a few times, um, just just giving them a chance to see, you know, a, a smaller school. We're not allowed to play another D1 school in this type of game. Um, so just being able to see two local schools that don't normally compete against each other compete. Um, sometimes it can be a little nerve-wracking uh, as, as we're trying to get our guys going. So, so for the fans is one piece. And then for us, especially with such a young team, we want to make sure that we get our guys some experience in live action in front of some folks. Um, so that the first time they're not playing uh, in front of fans is in Chicago, um, so they'll they'll be able to uh, to see some things. But it, it's 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 always challenging. Um, I remember uh, my two exhibition games as a freshman. I think I had uh, 16 points in the first game and 15 in the second, or vice versa. And I thought, you know, all yeah, this you're, is great. you're good, right? It's yeah, easy yeah, now, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then they, somebody said, "Well, you know, that doesn't count on your scoring average, right?" <laughs> <laughs> now wait a second. Was it with this one back in the day when you guys would have been playing like athletes in action? Athlete, yeah, yeah. California, California All, all -Stars. Stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. I think we played them and we played like Lithuania Lita. <laughs> okay, okay. That's, uh, I mean, that's pretty good competition, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they sent their top guys. All but, right, all right, never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it was, you know, it, it was all good, um, you know, good experience. But you do, you know, as coaches, you're a little nervous because you don't want anybody to do anything crazy. And Sure. Um, but it, but I, I think for this group, 
So we did just have that scrimmage against Morgan. It was just this weekend. This is later than normal um, in terms of, um, you know, uh, we like to get these more mid-October. Um, but this group needed a little more time. And um, and so it's playing tomorrow. We we got we got a lot of kinks to uh, to work through, um, and I'm just being honest with you all. Like, right. it's a it, it's it's a team that is still trying to figure some things out, and um, you know we'll get there though. Well, you're literally telling that to the guy who's scouting you right now, who's hey. listening to the interview <laughs> this morning. It is what it is, Bino. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow night again, you can go see the Greyhounds as they take on Stevenson at Reed's Arena, and then the first uh, regular season home game will be on November 13th when they bring in Brown. And that's a doubleheader uh, with the women as well. And the Ravens are off that day. They're on uh, by that weekend. So great opportunity to come out and check out some great hoops on Absolutely. the 13th. Absolutely. Coach Tavares Hardy, so good to see you, my friend. All right, you as well. Uh, we wish you well on, on continuing to break 100. 